I'm in the middle of a project here to uh, do some work on the railroad, but it's turning into as much of an Arduino project as anything else. Uh, what I'm doing is I've got a yard uh, with four tracks on it. Actually, here, let me just show you. Okay, I got this yard over here with four tracks on it. Uh, it's mostly a storage yard. It represents the end of the railroad um, and off the railroad and a bunch of things. Uh, but basically, there's one, two, three, four switches leading into it. Um, going to four tracks. And then down at the far end here, there's what's called a little escape tracker, an escape run around. So basically if a locomotive comes in this track, it can disconnect from its train here, go here and zip through this and get back out again to get onto the other end of the train and pull it back the other direction if it wants to. So, um, previously when I first built this, I built the whole thing assuming that I was going to use these Caboose Industries ground throws, which work perfectly well. And there's no reason not to use them. So far I decided, now that I've come up with these uh, servo motor controls, I want to put those on. Let's go down under here. So underneath those turnouts, I've got the same servo motor setup that uh, you saw in previous videos. Um, I'll link that down in the description. Uh, so there's the first one, this turnout, there's the second turnout, there's the third one. And then down at this end, there's the two for the uh, escape track. And then up on top, you can see the linkage that I got set up that uh, just operates it when the servo does its thing, right? That's exactly the same as before, except for I got more of them now. So in order to make this work, got the servos all mounted up underneath. We've got to modify the servos by taking both of those edges off so they can mount to the baseboard like you saw underneath and then this just metal strap can uh, screw down over top of it. So I got one more of those left to do. Um, I've got the Arduino. I'm using this Nano and this uh, little breakout shield because that way I can just plug the servo straight on to it. Um, if you notice, okay, if you notice that each of the pins is broken out with its own ground, its own voltage, and then the signal. So you can plug the servos straight in. Or, in my case, since the servos are kind of spread around a little bit, you can take some of this three-wire cable and plug it on. Come in. And then extend the servo further away, which is what I'm going to be doing so I've got to make up a few more of those cables for the servos that are further out. Mount that, mount that, write some software. Oh, and then I need a control panel to control it. So I've been doing some fancy drafting here. First of all, I did it in inches, and I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Then I redid it in millimeters so that I could actually get more precise. And then... Since I don't have any CAD, you know, tools, skills, ability, aptitude, I went into Inkscape, which is a vector drawing program, and drew out the control panel again with little dots where I want the this push button switches. Except that I'm not using push button switches because I'm going to use these touch sensors. Remember them from a mailbag a few weeks ago? So what I'm going to do is mount one of these touch sensors between, behind each one of those uh, spots on the, uh, on the control panel. So that's the other thing I have to do is build the physical control panel. Um, I'll use this as the overlay on it. Um, I'll probably laminate it, maybe. 
but I need to put some kind of board behind that just to hold it. And I also have to figure out how to make up for the thickness of this behind the paper because I don't want the paper to be all lumpy. I want it nice and smooth. I look vaguely professional. Okay, don't laugh when I'm saying that. You know what I mean. I, I, I want to try anyways. So I guess I'm just going to get on with it. There'll be a few montages and a few breakaways just to show details of stuff. And uh, here we go. <laughs> Now that it's installed, I have to figure out what uh, what settings or what uh, position for the servo motor puts the uh, turnout in its two positions, which is where this thing comes in. This thing is just another Arduino Nano uh, potentiometer and a display. It's one of those Nokia 51, whatever they are, displays. And the code on here is nothing magic. It is just two of the example sketches, the knob example sketch and the example sketch for that display. Um, and then the three wires go out to the servo. So there we go. And then I just adjust this thing and watch the, the points here. Can you see them? that's in place and just a little bit of tension on it so that is for this route which on this turnout is we'll call that the normal route uh, normally typically the uh, directions on a turnout are called normal and reverse normal is the straight through reverse is the not so straight through in this case the reverse is the one that's going off to the right there, so I'll just make a note here that reverse is 139, and then we'll just go the other way. Feels about right. So because these are cheap servos, they're keeping trying to get to their position. And that's what that fighting is. It's still trying. So I'm going to take care of that in code later. Um, basically, I'm just going to have a timeout when it's not, uh, when the button's not being pushed. It just goes over for a couple of seconds, then stays there. The mechanical uh, gearing inside the servo is going to hold it in position regardless. So there's no pressure on it, or there's no motor running. And it's just spring tension of the uh, wire there and underground that's holding it in position. So for the control panel, I'm just going to use this chunk of masonite. Um, I'm just going to basically trace the size onto there. I'll use one of my actual finished copies here. It's basically the same size. And just mark that on there and I'll cut it somewhere else. Now mason it you can cut with anything. You can cut it with a saw. I'm gonna use that and just a straight edge. It'll be easy. I'm going to do it over at my other workbench and, and pretend you're watching me cut. It's just basically make a bunch of light passes. Well, maybe you can snap with a sharper blade than that. And it'll cut off pretty clean. So now then we have to figure out how to accommodate the thickness of these things. What are we going to have on there? One, one, two, three, four, five of them. And they have to make the wiring happen somehow. So they're going to be sort of like that, right? 
underneath those positions. So, if you recall from when I got these things, you don't have to be, you don't have to touch them right on. You can be a few millimeters away, which is going to be advantageous because we can put a layer of cardstock down or two to give us the thickness that we need. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Let's quickly cut up a couple of those and they'll be good. So this stuff is just some kind of thick sign makers cardboard just left over from an old thing at some store that they were tossing out so now then I got two thicknesses of that which let's get in here that's just about perfect so now I just have to cut out the holes beyond where these things go and that is partly the reason why i printed off multiple copies of that so i can just work through here so i'm just going to make a center hole just a mark basically i am pretty much winging this by the way i've done a little bit of thinking and preparation off camera but what you're seeing is pretty much the first time I've tried any of these things so now then the actual sensor actually, why don't I just measure it doy uh, the sensor is one millimeter one centimeter by one and a half centimeters Okay, and the center of that is half a centimeter from one end. So. Uh, one and a half. Okay, now I'm going to carry on and draw those up and square them out, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, that's those all marked up. Now it's just a matter of cutting them out. And I'm going to cut a little bit wide because, because why not, right? My ruler. Cutting against a straight edge is a good plan. Now just to cut and... Okay. So there, we have those all down. So I'll glue, ooh, those fit pretty snug actually. I'll glue those down and I guess I'll transfer the markings onto this as well. Actually, maybe I'll do that now so they can work on that while the glue is drying. Because what I have to do on the backboard before I glue these onto it is put some holes in for the wires. So what I ended up doing was drilling a couple oversized holes and then cleaning it out with a with a file. So next to laminate all these pieces together. Again not to Precise, just get her done. Okay, now just to clamp it. That ought to do. So while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I'm going to extend my 5 volt power bus from where it is just up under the railroad. Oh, you can't see that there. Hang on. I've got a five volt power bus there, which appears at various places, but I want to extend that over to the area where I'm putting in my controls over there. So I'll be using this 18-2 uh, cable. It's basically door alarm wire. 
Did I say door alarm wire? I meant doorbell wire. Door alarm wire is usually a lighter gauge than this. And the reason I'm using 18 gauge instead of something lighter is because I don't want too much uh, voltage drop over the distance. So I use a lower resistance wire. And then I'm going to terminate it into that block right there and break out the voltage that I need. I've added these two jumpers in here so they just have extra positions because there's a maximum number of wires you can get into these connections just not based on any electrical code or anything just based on the physics of it. So if I need more feeds, ah oh crap should have gone through that clip. Oh, I'm just going to do it this way. Now then, I think I'm going to mount the Arduino right about there on its little baseboard. I think I'll put it facing that direction just so that it's easier to get at to reprogram later because I don't trust my programming enough to believe for a second that it won't need to be reprogrammed several times and I'm not cranking these down too tight because I don't want to bend the circuit board but it's solid enough that it's not going anywhere okay and now then here's my power wires which will route through there and into the block why through there just to keep it tight tidy I suppose I could shorten them but whatever all right. Now the new servos. I guess I can plug. Uh oh, come on, get through there. I guess I could plug the servos in too, couldn't I? So, according to my thing or my code, I'm using uh, pin digital two, digital four, digital seven. Five, six, seven, and then for the other two, I'm using eight and twelve, but I have to extend them with the extension wires I made earlier. Okay, that's them all connected. Now all I need to do is hook up the switches, which means I have to wait for the glue to dry. The other thing I want to do, and while I'm still waiting for the glue to dry, is to laminate this so that I don't get too many smudges and crap on it. Now, if I had one of those fancy heat laminating machines, I would use that, but I'm not, so I will just use packing tape. It's not going to be as rigid, but that doesn't really matter um, it is going to be smudge proof and clear and it will add a certain amount of uh, durability to the paper too and that piece wasn't quite cut big enough Here you go low budget laminating Once the uh, the rest of the control panel is finished, I'll just glue that on top. In order to get the signal from the control panel to the Arduino, which is uh, about six or so feet away, five feet away, something like that, I cut a bunch of uh, lengths of stranded wire just out of an old some old cable and crimped on ends, uh, single ends for the switches, and this double end to get power from the Arduino out to the switches and then I've slipped some heat shrink over those just to uh, hold them together in a bundle and I'll shrink them down just to make them a little bit less uh, like an ugly mob and a little bit easier to handle when I'm installing them. Let's see if the glue is dry on this. Oh yeah, it's dry, and as a bonus, it's nice and flat too. So 
So you may remember from my capacitor touch sensor uh, playing around video, I'll put a link up in the corner down in the description or something, that these touch sensors need uh, some capacitance to desensitize them a little bit. Otherwise, the, uh, the masonite and the covering paper and whatnot just makes them trigger constantly. So, uh, after a bit of a delay, I've got a bunch of 50, nan uh, 50 picofarad capacitors from China. Under normal circumstances, I, these would have to wait until there's a mailbag, but it says so right there what they are. So, here we go. 50 picofarad capacitors, surface mount, way more than I need because that's just how you order things from China. So we'll try them out. And there's the ones that I was experimenting with earlier. So I'll just start my experiments back there again. And I'll desolder those ones and solder one of these on and see how it works. Well, that's a little excessive, but I think it'll work. Yeah, it's ugly. Okay, that's that rigged up. I've got power on it. So let's put some masonite behind it. And it's not triggering. But when I touch it, it does trigger. And put some paper in front of it. And it'll still trigger when I touch it. But it's not triggering otherwise. That's exactly what I want. And I just have to put capacitors on the rest of them. Oh, and one more thing. Um, I've decided in my code that I want to use the internal pull-up resistors on the Arduino rather than using external pull-down resistors just for hardware simplicity. Um, so in that case, I have to make these things so that they are always high and go low on active and if you remember from when I was looking at these things there's those A and B pads there so the A pads the pair of A pads if I short them that will make it active low and the B set of pads just for just for fun toggles between momentary areas either momentary or toggle and I'm going to leave it momentary which is open so, all right so that's going to fit over there nicely but first I got to get these things in and get the wires soldered onto them where'd they all go there's the other ones So one of the wires is for each one. The signal wire is going to be one of these. Um, this one is power wire, um, positive and negative five volts. And then the signal pins, those are going to come up from the bottom, but I think I'm just going to tack the power wires onto each one to start and, uh, and go from there. This is going to be a little bit experimental. Okay, here's where the control panel wiring gets interesting. So I've got power leads on each of the each of these guys already. I just need to put the signal wire on and you can see I've got the signal wires all poked through from the back and the connectorized end is way over here so I just do each one of these in turn and I should have that dealt with that's kind of blobby there we go and cut that off flush and then I can see if my little my nefarious plan worked here so those wires go in through there that fits down into the hole 
nice and flush and there it is let's put a little spot of hot glue underneath that and then we can glue this on now there's a lot of ways that I could attach all these power wires together on the back of here I could use terminal block or one of those fancy Wago lever nuts I actually like those but I don't have any that can take six wires you know what just old school twist and solder nothing wrong with that uh, especially for something that's a permanent install normally I'm not a fan of these adhesive backed tie wrap pads but in this case I think I'll make an exception because I think it will do the job and that way I don't have to uh, worry too much about putting an extra screw through there and then I'll take this whole bundle back that way and then the whole thing is secured at once before I fully cinch that just make sure everything's in there and held that looks relatively reasonable nothing super tight there we go I'll just spray it in the laundry sink don't tell the missus okay hey spray glue is a kind of a new tool in my arsenal I'm not super used to it yet yeesh well back to the bench so I just got some pliers underneath that just so the wires don't get all whacked when I'm doing this I'll try and hold it by the edges and hopefully and get this on here reasonably no nope, that's not right it's a little high I don't know what that was that just fell off the corner of my workbench but I'm not concerned about it right now well that looks that looks all right the other thing I did just to save myself a little bit of insanity later is to just label the switches just in order one two three four five so that I can refer to my notes and figure out where to plug them into the Arduino later okay that looks like that's everything now i just got to do the code so here's what the code that i came up with looks like it's mostly just glued together from various different uh, examples and stuff as i tend to do um so, so the servo library obviously create a bunch of servos five of them um create a bunch of uh, inputs uh, from the digital inputs call them touch pins then I know normal programmers hate magic numbers but I couldn't come up with any other way of doing it basically this is the uh, the position values for each of the servos when they're in in their normal and the reverse positions I showed you earlier the uh the little thing that i was using to determine those just with the knob and screen and another arduino so that's all the different uh, positions that's a variable for toggling the uh the crossover because i want to push once and have it go this way push a second time and have it go the other way so that's just a variable for that um, set all the inputs to pull up 
because I'm using uh, the the uh, touch sensors in a uh, on means low mode so off or normal uh, means pulled up then I'll do the servo attach because you have to do that before you do anything to the servos and that's the pins that they're all going on to then I send them all the servos to their normal starting position uh, wait for half a second for them all to get there and then detach the servos normally uh, most sketches that I've seen don't do that you attach them and leave them there for the for the duration uh, I'm doing this because they just keep hunting just a little bit and with five of them it tends to get a bit noisy then the loop so I've got an if statement for each of the uh, each of the push buttons or each of the possible conditions I guess which sort of matches the push buttons why do I keep calling the push buttons they're touch sensors so if I hit the first one it moves servo one and it attaches it writes the uh, normal position and then waits half a second and detaches it track two does the same thing except for it moves servo one and servo two track three sets servo one two and three and track four also sets servos one two and three but in a slightly different orientation uh, for three it's reverse normal reverse and for four it's reverse normal normal and as always wait and then detach and then the escape track crossover which is touch input number five this is where I use this variable um, and so if the variable is zero uh, I'll set the two of them both to reversed and then flip that to variable to one uh, if else uh, so if it's if uh, the buttons pushed and that's not zero if it's in fact one or anything else but it can only ever be one um, I'll flip the two servos both to their normal position and then wait and then that's the end of the loop that's all it is it's nothing too fancy and I'm sure real programmers are going to uh, say there's a lot more efficient ways to do it if you know of those feel free to share down in the comments um, I may add that to this or at the very least it'll help other people uh, get their programming to better than what I'm doing I'm gonna upload this code uh, for anyone that actually wants it to have their very own copy for whatever reason for laughing and pointing at me I guess um, the link will be down in the description as always alrighty so here it is installed there's the panel you see a little bit of glow from the LEDs in the back of those touch switches if I do another one of these I'll probably take those LEDs off but for now if the lights are out in the room it looks kind of cool I don't know if I'm going to do any nighttime running or not anyway here's there's the the front three switches and I hope you can see this so I'm going to push there's number one two three and four so right now with it set to track four if I run this guy through okay I'll pull him back out now I'll set it to track one and he can come through this way all the way to the back of track one etc now then for the crossover oops it's set the wrong way there we go so for the crossover right now track one and track two are straight through I'm gonna hit that it crosses over this way so now we can do this pretty slick and then set it back to normal and there we go so again the point of that is so that a locomotive can just pull a train straight in and escape back out and do other things at the other end of the yard so there you go that was a fun project and i think that's going to uh, make my yard a lot more useful too um, easier and quicker to work in i hope you found that interesting maybe some of you got something useful out of it something you can apply to your own railroads that's great 
If anyone has any questions or comments, as always, leave them down in the comments section. There will be a couple of links down in the description to various things that I talked about in here. Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.